Well, it didn't take long in the season half to bring this out. If you know, you know. Let's go! Yeah! Bro! He did it! We're on a freaking power play! Why are we not shooting? Yeah, I swear to no. I can't even grammar properly right now. How frustrated I am. win 4-3 to three against the Seattle Kraken. That win still cements us as the best expansion franchise in sports history and the only thing that could break that is if they were to win the Stanley Cup, they being the Kraken. Man, what a way to open the season. A lot of different narratives going into the season for season 5, <laughs> the Roman numeral, which is also the shape of our helmet. Guys, this is the season! Bill Foley, new. Five. That, 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 this is the year we're gonna win the Stanley Cup, is year five. A lot of different stories, including Leonard being the full-time goalie. I love Robin Leonard, he's an amazing goalie. He's done nothing but win since coming to Vegas, and so I'm, I'm you know. Can our top six score? Who knows, let's find out. And Seattle had five players, I think-ish, on the COVID list a couple of days ago that weren't gonna be able to come in, and then all of a sudden, four of them were cleared. The only one that wasn't was Cal Yarncroak. With the first pick, we're going with the boy, boy, Cali, though. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, they were missing that player for depth, but they had all those other players that were able to come in, but it was like day of, and so you never know how much that impacted their performance, especially because the first period, they seemed to be really like an expansion team. Like they were trying to figure out how to play together still, and that's, that's great. And immediately to start this game, chaos in front of Robin Leonard with like, oh, what, 22 seconds in, and Everly uh, going to the ground, tries to lift it up, rings off the crossbar. And uh, that, was, that, was, that was close. Immediately giving them a power play to be able to show their stuff, but we were able to kill it off despite one of our best penalty killers being in the box. <laughs> and like 30 seconds later, Stevenson can fly over to Stone, back to Patches, who snipes it, far side and in, past Grubauer to make it 1 0 Golden Knights on the first shot that we have taken this game. Very cool stat from that goal from uh, NHL PR as well as Justin Emerson. Last night, Max Patrick became the first player in NHL history to score against all 32 teams. <laughs> and then less than three minutes later, William Carlson over to Marcia So Deeks around Grubauer. Everyone thinks he's gonna shoot, but he doesn't. And he goes around and waits for Grubauer to be able to kick out his leg, sees that there's an opening in front of the net, puts it there, bangs it on backhand to score again to nothing Vegas. Oh man, it is so good to be back. And we actually get a power play opportunity pretty shortly after this. And in typical Golden Knights fashion, the best opportunity came from the Seattle Kraken. Beautiful heads up pass from Schwartz up to Tanev who is just streaming in, has his breakaway opportunity on Leonard but mishandles the puck right in front of him. Good positioning on Leonard for that. Heading into the second period, Vegas just seemed to be in charge of this game and that's how it seemed for most of the game. <laughs> sure hopes that within a minute of the second period, Jaden Schwartz is called off for a penalty and then immediately after the power play was done because we didn't do anything with it, uh, they serve a too many men over the ice, which is typical expansion franchise, still getting used to the system, etc., still getting used to communicating with these types of players and stuff. But like, honestly, could have been just a good strategy from Seattle. You know, keep us on the power play. You guys will have more chances. It'll, it'll be great. Very, very smart. And that's not at all sarcastic, actually. But Vegas still looked very much in charge of this game. And that was capped off with Mark Stone feed over to Nicholas Haig. Nick Haig. Risks it for a Hager bomb, and it ends up in the back of the net, three nothing Vegas Golden Knights. Except, <laughs> after the period was over, it was confirmed that it was tipped in front by a Pacioretty and it was given to him, so his second of the night to get the three nothing lead. And then we send them right back to the power play and uh, momentum starts to actually shift into Seattle's favor here. Seattle looked really solid on their power play tonight. They weren't able to get anything on it, but <laughs> it looked stronger than ours. And uh, immediately after we kill off this power play, they're able to actually get the first goal in franchise history. Donskoy sends it over to Dunn, who just flings it on net, and in the chaos that's there, Vegas can't clear the puck. Ryan Donato putting everything out on the line, grabbing this puck and sliding it in backhand pass Leonard to make history, becoming Seattle's first ever franchise goal. Net front battles. I like Vegas has struggled with that for a long time. They just haven't been able to 
you know, be heavy up front, and uh, Seattle was able to capitalize on that there by doing just that. Former Shark too, and so there's that. And then a minute later, Schwartz gets the puck over to Eberle, who's got uh, an opportunity to shoot, but instead passes it over to McCann, who's on the right side. Nobody around McCann. McCann just flings it on net, and it goes off of a stick. It wasn't Seattle's, it was either Theodore's or some other Golden Knight crashing the net, uh, but it goes in past Leonard to make it 3-2. <laughs> we didn't want a two-goal lead anyway. That's the worst lead in hockey, right? After that first Seattle goal, Seattle came to life and that was directly evident by the goal 60 seconds later and they had a new energy about them the rest of the night and it also helped that T-Mobile usually gets strained whenever there's a lead cut short like that. They had a lot of momentum, T-Mobile wasn't playing as much of a factor in you know dampening that and so <laughs> Seattle. In the third period about eight minutes in March or so in the offensive zone loses the puck battle to Lauzon who pokes it and it goes straight up the ice to Morgan Geeky. Streams in, White Cloud doesn't know what he's gonna do in <laughs> Morgan Geeky, what a snipe, dude. Makes it 3-3. Nope, don't like that. Hey, let's score on this next shift. All right, very next shift. Mark Stone passes it over to Patrick, who sends it right back to Stone and flings it over to Stevenson. Now here's where the whole shirt about the Golden Refs thing comes in because Stevenson's foot angles the puck into the net past Grubauer, so 4-3. But <laughs> if it's a kicking motion, it's no goal. Was it a kicking motion? NHL analysis, rules analysis, Toronto all made the call that it was not a kicking motion. However, there was one angle where I was like, yeah, that that's a kick. His toe came off and it just goes in and I, I personally don't think that one should have counted. Turns out Seattle's definitely not the golden boy. Oh, golden. Oh, that makes sense. Just like that, Vegas has the lead back and uh, welcome to the NHL Seattle. Vegas is able to shut it down for the next 11, 12-ish minutes and is able to seal this one with a 4-3 victory. Seattle, my goodness, I'm so happy you guys are in the league. Uh, this is gonna be such a fun season to watch you guys and to be able to see what's different, what's the same, about the expansion franchises between Vegas and Seattle. I like their, their jerseys are mwah. Oh my goodness. Uh, all three of the patches on the ice were absolutely beautiful and I want them. The Seattle one, the Vegas' All-Star 2022 patch, and then <laughs> patch ready. Other aspects of this game, Mark Stone had three assists in this game. The first one was a primary, the second one was a secondary, and that's because it was Haig shot tipped in front. Stone sent it over to Haig who took the shot and I think it would have gone in even if Patches hadn't deflected it, but he did get a piece of it. And I mean, he has two goals of this season, so he's on pace for 162, but no, 164? I can math. I have a finance TA. Questions. Who is your MVP of the game and why is he 2019 Stanley Cup champion Alex Petrangelo? Mark Stone had one good game as far as getting on the scoreboard, but like throughout most of the game, like that was pretty much it. Whereas on the opposite side of that spectrum, there was Petro who didn't get on the scoreboard, but had one monster of a game. Consistently looked like Vegas' best player on the ice, including a penalty kill in the last five minutes that was absolutely monstrous. This dude was on the ice for a minute 47 of it, skated up the ice the whole 200 feet. Uh, he kept it in there, so I was assuming that like other people would be able to change. But then he skated all the way back and had a block shot to end that kill, and it was just a really masterful piece of work by that guy. So worth his contract right now, and like I, I knew he would be eventually, or <laughs> hoped so at least. Uh, and it took him a bit to get used to Vegas' system, but once he did towards the end of last regular season, he's been our best player. Like, in the playoffs, he was our best player. This next question was by me, <laughs> but uh, with NHL switching over to ESPN, I hope that this does wonders for the expansion <laughs> of our sport, but uh, there were a couple of interesting things going on in the game, including this angle of camera that was like a floating angle that you saw on the ice, and it was kind of weird. Where are y'all at on the floating camera angle? Most people really don't like it. Uh, I am. I think it's okay. Eric says, I always wondered what to watch a game from the roof would look like. And yep, well, that. <laughs> also, Vegas hit the iron a lot tonight. Uh, we hit the post three or four times, and honestly, like, it's just. 
how it is. Hearing Saved by Leonard on Flurry was absolutely the strangest thing I had ever heard. And then down goes Brown. Unlike the NFL, hockey players know how to win games on a clutch kick. Yeah? Um, yeah. Anyways, that's gonna be it for Season 2, Game 1's nightly review. Thank you so much for watching and have a good night.